To seal, vibrant sealant is a two-component vibrant sealant with synthetic aprotonin. The to seal sealer protein solution includes human fibrinogen and synthetic aprotonin. The other to seal component, the thrombin solution, includes human thrombin and calcium chloride. During application, the interaction of these components mimics the last step in the coagulation cascade, independent of the endogenous coagulation cascade. The human fibrinogen, which forms the structural component of a clot, is activated by thrombin to fibrin monomers, which crosslink to form the fibrin network. The resulting resorbable clot begins to set in less than 10 seconds and is sufficiently polymerized in about two minutes and, once formed, has an ultrastructure resembling a physiological clot. This clot adheres to the wound surface and achieves hemostasis, sealing, or gluing of tissues. The provisional scaffold of the to seal clot allows diffusion of nutrients, stem cells, and ingrowth of fibroblasts which is followed by cell proliferation and differentiation. The clot is protected from plasmin-mediated proteolysis by the synthetic aprotonin contained in Tisil. This antifibrinolytic protease inhibitor prevents premature clot degradation, allowing time for the tissue to begin healing. The clot is ultimately broken down and replaced with normal connective tissue through the body's natural wound healing process. The seal is resorbed over a period of up to 10 to 14 days, depending on the site of application. The seal has over 40 years of clinical experience across the world in a wide range of clinical applications. It is made from pooled human plasma manufactured as part of an integrated three-stage viral safety inactivation process. The seal, fibrin sealant, provides clot stability through the action of synthetic aprotonin, five times more tensile strength than the normal clot based on in vitro data, well-established safety and efficacy in published clinical data, versatile application options for open or laparoscopic use, and demonstrated efficacy in fully heparinized patients. Indication, supportive treatment where standard surgical techniques appear insufficient for improvement of hemostasis, as a tissue glue to improve wound healing, or to support sutures in vascular surgery and in gastrointestinal anastomosis, for tissue sealing, to improve adhesion of the separated tissue, e.g., tissue flaps, grafts, split skin grafts, mesh grafts. The efficacy in fully heparinized patients has been proven. Contraindications. To seal alone is not indicated for the treatment of massive and brisk arterial or venous bleeding. To seal is not indicated to replace skin sutures intended to close surgical wound. To seal must never be applied intravascularly. Intravascular application may result in life-threatening thromboembolic events. To seal must not be applied in case of hypersensitivity to the active substances or to any of the excipients. Special warnings and precautions for use. For epilesional use only, do not apply intravascularly. Life-threatening thromboembolic complications may occur if the preparation is unintentionally applied intravascularly. Caution must be used when applying fibrin sealant using pressurized gas. Any application of pressurized gas is associated with a potential risk of air or gas embolism, tissue rupture, or gas entrapment with compression, which may be life-threatening. Applied to seal as a thin layer, excessive clot thickness may negatively interfere with the product's efficacy and the wound healing process. Life-threatening, fatal air or gas embolism has occurred with the use of spray devices employing a pressure regulator to administer fibrin sealants. This event appears to be related to the use of the spray device at higher than recommended pressures and or in close proximity to the tissue surface. The risk appears to be higher when fibrin sealants are sprayed with air, as compared to CO2, and therefore cannot be excluded with to seal when sprayed in open wound surgery. When applying to seal using a spray device, be sure to use a pressure within the pressure range recommended by the spray device manufacturer. 
To seal spray application should only be used if it is possible to accurately judge the spray distance as recommended by the manufacturer. Do not spray closer than the recommended distances. When spraying to seal, changes in blood pressure, pulse, oxygen saturation, and end tidal CO2 should be monitored because of the possibility of occurrence of air or gas embolism. To seal must not be used with the easy spray, spray set system in enclosed body areas. Before the administration of to seal, care is to be taken that parts of the body outside the designated application area are sufficiently protected, covered, to prevent tissue adhesion at undesired sites. If fibrin sealants are applied in confined spaces, e.g. the brain or the spinal cord, the risk of compressive complications should be taken into account. To ensure adequate mixing of the sealer protein component and the thrombin component, the first few drops of the product from the application cannula should be expelled and discarded immediately before use. As with any protein-containing product, allergic-type hypersensitivity reactions are possible. Intravascular application might increase the likelihood and severity of acute hypersensitivity reactions in susceptible patients. Hypersensitivity and anaphylactic reactions, also fatal, including anaphylactic shock, have been reported with Tocille. Signs of hypersensitivity reactions may include hives, generalized urticaria, tightness of the chest, wheezing, hypotension. If these symptoms occur, the administration must be discontinued immediately, and the currently valid standard measures for the treatment of shock are to be taken. Remaining product must be removed from the site of application. To seal contains a synthetic protein, a protonin. Even in case of strict local application, there is a risk of anaphylactic reaction linked to the presence of a protonin. The risk seems to be higher in cases where there was previous exposure, even if it was well tolerated. Therefore, any use of a protonin or a protonin-containing products should be recorded in the patient's records. As synthetic aprotonin is structurally identical to bovine aprotonin, the use of Tocille in patients with allergies to bovine proteins should be carefully evaluated. In two retrospective, non-randomized studies in coronary bypass surgery, patients who received fibrin sealant showed a statistically significant increased risk of mortality. While these studies could not provide a causal relationship, the increased risk associated with the use of Tocille in these patients cannot be excluded. Therefore, additional care should be taken to avoid inadvertent intravascular administration of this product. Injection into the nasal mucosa must be avoided, as thromboembolic complications may occur in the area of the arteria ophthalmica. Injecting Tocille into tissue carries the risk of local tissue damage. To seal should only be applied as a thin layer. Excessive clot thickness may negatively interfere with the product's efficacy and the wound healing process. Polysorbid 80 may cause locally limited skin irritations such as contact dermatitis. Standard measures to prevent infections resulting from the use of medicinal products prepared from human blood or plasma include selection of donors, screening of individual donations, and plasma pools for specific markers of infection and the inclusion of effective manufacturing steps for the inactivation, removal of viruses. Despite this, when medicinal products prepared from human blood or plasma are administered, the possibility of transmitting infective agents cannot be totally excluded. This also applies to unknown or emerging viruses and other pathogens. These measures taken are considered effective for enveloped viruses, such as human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, hepatitis B virus, HBV, and hepatitis C virus, HCV, and for the non-enveloped hepatitis A virus, HAV. The measures taken may be of limited value against non-enveloped viruses, such as parvovirus B19, Parvovirus B19 infection may be serious for pregnant women, fetal infection, and for individuals with immunodeficiency or increased erythropoiesis, e.g., hemolytic anemia. Appropriate vaccination, hepatitis A and B, 
should be considered for patients in regular, repeated receipt of human plasma-derived fibrin sealant. It is strongly recommended that every time that to seal is administered to the patient, the name and batch number of the product are recorded in order to maintain a link between the patient and the batch of the product. Oxidized cellulose-containing preparations should not be used with to seal because the low pH interferes with the activity of the thrombin. Please refer to full local prescribing information before use.